You can also apply edits to the entire mesh by clicking the edit button. You'll find basic operations in transform, including moving, rotating, and scaling. For uniform scaling, hold down control and option before clicking and dragging, or use the numeric input on the sidebar, making sure that uniform scaling is checked. Mirror creates a plane of symmetry anywhere in your object. You can move it just like you would in transform, as well as rotate it. You'll notice that when I snap to this ring along the outside, I'm getting increments of five degrees, which is really handy if you want to get an exactly 90 degree rotation. Duplicate just creates a second copy of your mesh. You'll see that the object browser opened. You can think of this like a layers panel and I can hide and go back to my original mesh. Hollow is a really useful tool for turning a closed solid mesh into a thin shell. For this example, I erase and filled the hole on the bottom of the bunny model. When I click hollow, it's gonna give me a preview with the default wall thickness called offset distance. And I can change that with the slider at the top of the panel. This is really great for 3D printing because it uses less material than a solid model. You just wanna make sure that your wall thickness is large enough that it's not gonna be weak or it's not gonna be brittle when you 3D print. So I could type in four millimeters and update the preview. It's best to do this after you've scaled your model to the size that you want it to be. Otherwise, if you scale after creating the wall thickness, it might end up too thick or too thin. This looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to click Accept. It doesn't look like anything has changed now, but I can use a really useful feature called Plane Cut to show what's going on inside. You can see from this cross section that the model is still solid, but it has a thick wall and that's uniform all the way throughout the model. Plane cut is also really useful for cropping out extra data like the floor or the background from a 3D scan. I can click accept and I can see that my model is still solid and watertight, but I'm gonna go back a couple steps. So I have my hollow. I know that it's the original bunny and a second shell inside and I can use separate shells to really make that clear. Again, in the objects browser, I now have three objects. I'm gonna hide everything except the internal shell. This has this black stripey appearance. On your computer, it might look pink. And what that means is that I'm seeing the inside of the mesh instead of the outside. Um, it's super important that you have what's called your normals oriented correctly. That tells other software where's the inside and where's the outside of your mesh. And luckily, there's a really quick way to fix this. For example, if I wanted to print this object by itself, I'm going to the select panel, checking allow back faces, and then I'm just double clicking. It's hard to see, but right now everything on the mesh is selected. Going to the edit panel and selecting flip normals. Now you can see the mesh is right side out. It's watertight. It's a little bit of a strange shape, but if I wanted to 3D print this, at this point, I would be ready to do so. I'm going back to my two copies of the solid bunny model, and I'm gonna move one a little bit out of the way. So they're not totally overlapping, but they still have some intersection. So when you have multiple shells selected, you have this limited menu of things that you can do. You can transform them, you can combine them back into one object in the object browser, but a really powerful tool is being able to do Boolean operations. So I can try a Boolean union between these two meshes, and instead of intersecting, they're now just going to be one solid mesh. Again, it doesn't look from the outside like much has changed, but if I do a plane cut, I can see that this model, it doesn't have any internal walls, it's just solid all the way through, so that's really great. I'm gonna step back before I did the Boolean union, and I'm gonna show a different type of Boolean operation. So I have my two copies. This time let's do a Boolean difference, and for this one, order is important. 
So the one that you select second will be subtracted from the one that you select first. You can see it's cut out, and this is really handy for designing parts that fit together. You'll usually want to include a little bit of clearance, but a Boolean operation like this, it's a great first step to making interlocking parts, for example. And now I have my solid cutout bunny.